I am going to show you some our new development on for our GIS program. Um, so what is Valdosta Lounge Prospector? It is okay. It is a comprehen comprehensive interna interactive website with available properties and demographic information. And um, we use this tool because 97% of site selection screening starts online, and so this is one of the tools that we have um, available from a link on our website for them to go ahead and start viewing properties um, in Lowndes County, see what our available real estate is. Um, and this is a tool that we've used in the past. We have just, the, the company has just gone through an upgrade and um, included some additional features. Um, but it does have its own URL, um, which is valdostalounsprospector.com, um, which is linked from our site. Um, but I'm going to show you a full a few of the ways that this operates. Um, so when you first open the site, this is the map that comes up and search results of properties. And if we were on a larger screen, you'd be able to see the map and properties at the, simultaneously at the same time which is one of the um, new features of it so that you're not scrolling horizontally, but scrolling vertically through properties. And so you can, and the sites on the map change when you, as you scroll through the properties, it updates. So you're looking at the whole county and sites as you're, pro as you're looking at the property profiles beneath as well. Um, on this site, you can search Um, sites, you can search buildings, you can search community profiles, you can search businesses, um, and then with each of these different search um, property profiles, it generates reports. Reports on demographics, reports on wages, reports on labor, um, and the demographic reports. Um, as well as, so when we, we can select a few when you click when you see the properties down below you can um, save those save whichever ones you're look which ones you find you like and those are going to go over here in the folder so we find a few that we want to save um, to look at and then we can go to my folder and it'll just bring up the three sites there so that's all that we're looking at are the three sites that we've selected on the map. Here um, are some additional tools or overlays for the map. You have um, the demographics are heat maps. There are um, layers for elevation and, and zones. And we will put in a few, a few of those look at our industrial sites, tax parcels, traffic counts, a plethora of information comes up and you can, we can click on, property profile here and you'll see a full description with more details on that just that one property with contact information <laughs> and here are your labor force demographic <coughs> um, reports and um, your labor demographic consumer spending of wages reports are all within a 10 mile radius that's the default but as if you can you can go into the modify report and change the radius or drive time and it will draw up the polython on the map for you to see. Um, the business search report is one mile, but that also can be modified um, through um, the modifier report. We currently have, there are currently 83 properties on the site um, with 49 users um, being brokers um, and 
other real estate agents within the, the community. Um, you can click on the map for, to see a quick fact so on the site and then any of those reports can be pulled there as well. Um, so that's our prospector. Me Megan, I yeah. have a couple of questions. I I'm a little confused. Okay. Um, if you go back to the beginning, um, how are the parks organized in terms of what crops up? For example, you know, if, if I go to this website and I'm looking for industrial parks, are they by age, by newness, by size, are they alphabetized? Okay. Um, on the home page, they're just, it's just a generalist. Here you, on the top toolbar, you can search for sites, and here we can search by acres, any size for any what size acres you're looking for, if it, you're looking for for sale for lease, mm -hmm. and then there's more filters that you can search by geography. Okay, but let's yeah. let's talk okay. about it from the the filterless standpoint. When I go to parks, what crops up? I, I'm it's just gonna, it's not really going to crop up as a park. What's going to crop up is what's general underneath. So it's just okay. going to scroll. Yeah, you got to scroll to find the park. So my question is, if I, if I'm prospecting for locations, we've we've invested a significant amount of money in the two parks here recently. Just would it be to our advantage to, to kind of highlight? Well, what we can do. What's new? Let's see if you would, that one's featured. Here, see right here in the administration. Which is another side. Oh, I of them. see the okay. I yeah. see the green stripe. Each park is. We have each of our parks on the site, and we have them as featured properties. Um, as they scroll through them, they they also if any site is ever is updated, it that there's going to be an updated um, same type graphic like that feature on the site. Okay, I guess more to the point, I'm looking at Miller, then Lakes, then Hayhara. And then the white water. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's no rhyme or reason for them being up in that particular order. Should they be? Should should we have the newest, the prettiest? Of I think the I think I've been wa I've been watching that as I pull it up every yeah. day and play with it, okay. and it changes. And so I'm thinking it's something. I believe it's something to do with the analytics of it and the numbers of times that that site has been viewed. Oh, okay, okay. That it comes up there, <clears throat> and so it's... I was trying to think of the rationale right, as to why the these order. parts are first. Right. Okay. Well, and a lot of people, when they go to search, they're going to enter in the amount of acreage they're looking for. So okay. they're not going to look at Miller. They're not. They're just going to enter, I want 50 acres. Okay. They're going to search, and then those properties are going to pop up there are 50 acres or more. Okay. And then if you start for the building search, you can search by office, retail, industrial, and it'll, those properties that'll come up in the And store. what are the green zones on the map? The greens are icons for the industrial parks that we selected. Okay. There's, um, the, you'll see the buildings are going to come up and there'll be a different icon. Okay. Alan presented this last month to the Board of Realtors, and um, we'll be doing an update to several groups like that on the. What they say about it? They, they liked it, and, and they were familiar to a large extent with our old GIS prospector site. Mm -hmm. But they really like the new features. They like the look. It's got the you know the new Google look to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, so it's, it's a lot faster and a lot easier to use. The other one had a lot of scrolling, it was smaller, it was harder to find things. This is really easy for them to <coughs> scroll through and find out what they're And, and it's, more, it's more familiar, it's more accustomed to what they're looking at every day. And see, one thing you can do with this is like, let's say she's got a featured property and she fe we feature Miller. We can put that on, we can tag that and put it on Facebook and Twitter it on our account and then it'll pull the report up and everything. So you can link it that way too. So there's the other different features that we can use for that. And how many overlays can you do? Um, you can do it all of them at once. Do you really? them all at once? Yeah, you can't really. It, there's a legend for you to see which one, what each one means, but it's maybe so like hard if you just want incentive zones, you can input the incentive zone, for instance, hub zones, okay. mili, you know, military zones, <coughs> urban redevelopment zones. If you want to look at just the floodplains, we can look at that as well. Um, we can look at. Um, 
a lot of different things. And the way that we come up with that is Megan has worked closely with um, Chris Strom at the South Georgia Regional Center and layering our, G our GIS mm -hmm. um, overlays through that. So that's how this is, that's how they get this information is that partnership through them. Okay. We, we also look at what typically our prospects are looking for. Mm -hmm. So we've got those layers added there too mm -hmm. uh, because it's a really efficient tool and so when we have somebody call a prospect call in and they say we want a hundred thousand square foot building then we'll say let's go look at I mean we obviously know which ones we want but we'll also go let's go look at prospector together and we'll walk through the property and we can do it right there and it's very interactive for us to do that with them sure. just um, for data and research information you can generate those reports for really anywhere in Lowndes County um, with any mile <coughs> radius you would like um, through the tools there's a pinpoint so you can still pinpoint the location you want to get get result um, data for or you can draw an area selection with a polygon um, that you just create and it will and once you select it you can apply the filters and um, run the reports that you want to for that selection of area that you just decided you wanted to know about. So well, we primarily use it for our site selection. If there are other people out there that are doing grants and things like that, they can go here to get that demographic info and it's um, census data. Yeah, census data is updated twice a year. Mm -hmm. So um, they can go for people that are doing grants or anything like that can go to our prospector site and use that information. And we made the public aware of this? Well, we've had this tool for a while, so I think in an effort, it's been... We've had that one outreach, and we, we will do more. Mm -hmm. as we... Especially with the fact that we've just upgraded it, and it's a new huh. version. That's neat. I like it. That's... And um, both Megan and Alan, I have to say thank you, too, because they've worked very, very hard, not only on this as well, but also on all those other sites you see <laughs> for the utilities. and. Um, working on getting our sites updated and making sure they're accurate and old data is removed and new stuff is put in. So that's been a very tedious um, process for them over the last month. So. Well, um, I attended um, Georgia Power had a project management 101 class and the number one, I mean, they showed us some great technology and great engineering um, programs that they're using, but the number one thing they stressed was data quality. And so that was a huge deal was that we need to know that these numbers are, are real and are the, the right numbers that we're looking at for these sites and properties that you have. So, okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. 